Whether you like them sweet or salty, dipped in frosting or mustard, or even if you prefer hard over soft, the snack food we talk about in this episode continues to be a favorite around the world. And I don't know about you, but it's pretty tough to pass the kiosk at the mall for these delicious treats without the scent of them tempting me to break every diet I'm ever on. In this episode, we'll talk about the religious meaning and origins behind these snacks, the different incarnations of them spawned by accidents, and how they've become associated with luck, marriage, and even helped thwart the attempts of invasion. I'm your host, Emily Prokop, and this is the story behind pretzels. But first, a quick message. If you like this podcast, you might be interested in other podcasts that focus on the humanities. In fact, if you search Twitter for the hashtag Humanities Podcasts, you'll find plenty of shows on history, language, literature, philosophy, art, and more. These are podcasts by people who enjoy telling stories, exploring the arts in our world, and who want to share their knowledge. Some examples of podcasts you'll find are Go Dig a Hole, an archaeology podcast, the Trojan War podcast, which retells the classic myth, and As We Like It, where three friends talk about film adaptions of Shakespeare. Search the hashtag Humanities Podcast today, or follow Humanities Podcasters on Twitter. And if you're a Humanities Podcaster, use the hashtag in your tweets so others can find you. There isn't one concrete story about the origin of the pretzel, but there are a few twisted tales. Sorry, I had to get at least one pretzel pun out in this episode. The most common story, however, is that an Italian monk wanted to keep the attention of his catechism students back in 610 AD. He rolled out dough and crossed the ends to mimic the position of the students' arms, as they should have been crossed during prayer at that time. If you remember from the episode, The Story Behind Christmas Traditions, this isn't the first time food was invented to help occupy young people for religious reasons. One theory about the invention of candy canes that I mentioned in the episode is that they were made to resemble the staffs of shepherds at the birth of Christ, and the candy was made to keep the children quiet during a Christmas Eve church service. The monk named his creation Pretiola, which is Latin for little reward, but they alternatively got the name Broccolea, which is Latin for little arms. You may also recognize the root of the word brock or brace in other words pertaining to arms, such as bracelet and embrace. As a side note, I found myself in a rabbit hole concerning the etymology and found out that the similar Greek root brach or brachio can be found in the word brachiosaur, which literally means arm lizard. Anyway, back to pretzels. After they were invented, their popularity spread throughout Europe during the Middle Ages. Because of cheap ingredients, they were commonly given to the poor as nourishment. They were especially popular during Lent, when Christians were forbidden from eating certain foods. So pretzels, with the simple ingredients of flour and water at the time, became associated with Lent and Easter. Pretzels were even baked and hidden for children to find, along with the hard-boiled eggs we're more familiar with now. Even though pretzels were invented by an Italian, they're frequently associated with Germany as a favorite food. In fact, there is a distinction between a traditional pretzel and a German pretzel, which was known as a bretzel. Again, there are different versions of the story about how German pretzels were invented, but one of the more common is that they were made accidentally, which seems to be a common theme among inventions in this podcast. In 1839, a baker for the Munich Royal Cafe was preparing to bake pretzels, but instead of brushing them with sugar water, he accidentally used a sodium hydroxide solution that was used as a cleaner for the bakery equipment. Instead of throwing away the batch because, hey, maybe putting cleaning supplies on food isn't the greatest idea, he baked them anyway. What he found when he pulled them out of the oven was a crispy brown crust and a salty taste that he and Guest found delicious. And one more pretzel innovation that came from an accident was the invention of hard pretzels, which came about in the early 1600s when a baking apprentice in Philadelphia fell asleep and overcooked the batch. Of course, his boss was angry, and in his rage while yelling at the apprentice, he took an angry bite out of a crunchy pretzel. But once he tasted them, he found he loved them. Good thing for the apprentice. In 
In addition to the origin about the religious symbolism behind the knotted dough, the holes in the pretzel also became a symbol for Christianity. The three holes representing the Holy Trinity of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Even in non-religious lore, the pretzel came to represent good luck, prosperity, and a long life. In Germany, children were known to wear pretzel necklaces on New Year's Day. And if you ever wondered where the phrase tying the knot came from, it might have something to do with the Swiss tradition of newlyweds breaking a lucky pretzel in the same manner as a wishbone. Austria is another country with pretzel lore associated with it. At Christmas, pretzels were part of the tree decorations in the 16th century. And in addition to that, legend has it that monks were baking pretzels in the basement of their monastery in 1510, when they heard Ottoman Turks tunneling underground. These monks were able to alert the city so they could thwart the attack and defeat the Turks. The Viennese king awarded the bakers with their own coat of arms, and many signs outside bakeries still depict a lion holding a shield in the shape of a pretzel. One more piece of pretzel lore is that pretzels came to America on the Mayflower and were used to trade with the Native Americans. Even today, pretzels are still one of the most popular snack foods on the market and have been notable features in sitcoms like The Office in the episode titled Initiation, where the office grump Stanley Hudson finally shows he can be happy about something, namely Pretzel Day. And admittedly, I've never been a Seinfeld fan, but even I know the scene in the episode, The Alternate Side, in which Kramer is given a line in a Woody Allen movie, which his friends offer advice about how to deliver. These pretzels are making me thirsty. <laughs> is that how you're going to say it? No, no, I'm working on it. Do it like this. These pretzels are making me thirsty. No. These pretzels are making me thirsty. No, no, see, that's no good. See, you don't know how to act. <laughs> These pretzels are making me thirsty. But humor aside, when George W. Bush sported a bruised cheek in 2002, it was revealed he choked on a pretzel and fainted, only to wake up to his dogs looking at him concerned. But he was a good sport about it the next day. Thank you all. I thought for a while, when they told me that I was going to receive a gift here, that old Chuck was going to bring a pretzel. <laughs> Those kind that are easy to chew. If my mother is listening, mother, I should have listened to you. Always chew your pretzels before you swallow. Thanks to Avon from The Endless Knot for helping me with my Latin pronunciation. Information for this episode was sourced from todayifoundout.com, history.com, germanfoodguide.com, and more links, which can be found in the show notes at thestorybehindpodcast.com. Follow on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Story Behind Pod, and subscribe on your favorite podcast app so you'll never miss an episode. Thanks for listening. <laughs>